Hey, I'm Nick Gamer, and welcome back to FM Youth Factory. This is episode number 14. New year, new rankings. Let's see where the team fits in. But first, Premier Division, surprise, Tottenham. Up to five-star, world-class reputation, second ahead of Man City even. Uh, what is it that they have done to suddenly earn this mega reputation? It wasn't a league performance. They were 12th. Actually, that was the previous year. What did they do this year, though? They are your current Champions League winners, the 2025 Champions League winners. There it is. First ever in their history has seen a significant rise in their reputation. They won the Europa League the year before, by the way. Following our third overall season, starting with a reputation of 1 out of 10,000, we have had our second straight promotion, and we have seen ourselves climb rapidly. However, we're still half-star obscure reputation. But the bottom end is so shallow that it doesn't take much, and we have overtaken half of all the English clubs in three years. That's incredible. That is absolutely incredible that we have managed to do that. Now these rankings in these lower divisions are literally just all over the place. But we are leaving behind the 10th tier. We are heading to the 9th tier. And if you recall, as we are from Cornwall, we are keeping track of where we progress in relation to our local region. Just within our greater division, we had left behind 32 clubs at that 11th tier. Now the 10th tier that we are leaving behind, just in our greater two division, you know, that, that tournament that we just won at the end of the season. Technically, we leave behind another 36, but realistically, we leave behind another 37. There was one team when we got promoted from the 11th to the 10th that went down to replace us, and they would have been from that local region as well. So technically, we moved beyond them, and that's now 37 more clubs behind us. And this, this is where things start to get interesting in relation to the rise up the ranks of Cornwall discussion. In Cornwall itself, there is one team that stands out above the rest, Truro City. We got a long ways to go to match them. But below Truro City, literally the next highest is now within the division we are in. Six clubs from Cornwall sit in that division. We make it seven, which means we are now, presumably if we fall below the rest of those, we are now the eighth highest ranked Cornwall club in the game. That's how far we've come already. And we will see ourselves jump to second if we, as expected, continue on and on our rapid rise for, you know, for the next few divisions at minimum. Now, when we add in Devon to the picture, the, the next county, but still right there on the peninsula, Devon pushes up a little bit higher than Cornwall does. We've really climbed that ladder too. We've overtaken certainly more than half of those clubs, but we've got a ways to go yet for the greater peninsula and certainly for that Southwest region. There are plenty of clubs still ahead of us. But in terms of the overall grand scheme of things, after just two climbs in division, we already find ourselves better than half the clubs out there in terms of reputation. We've got a long ways to go yet though. But as for uh as for that Cornwall aspect of it, we're we're getting up there. We are getting up there. We are now a top ten Cornish club. The board has pushed us to increase wages for coaches, so there's a good positive. And also we find ourselves with not one, not two, but but were competitions to compete in this year. Chance to win some serious silverware, maybe? I know two of these competitions, two of them I'm only vaguely familiar with. I think one of them in particular 
I know where we're headed with it, but we'll we'll see uh, if my memory serves me correctly. So we're up to the Western League Premier Division now. There is a secondary division, but that secondary division does not include Cornwall and or Devon. It's more of an interior second division. And when you're coming up out of that far western edge of that peninsula, you're coming from the tier that we just came from straight to that premier division. It's a little weird how that one works when there is an under level to it. But most of those Western League Premier Division teams, the vast majority, are from that more easterly direction. And so they have a huge body of teams uh, below them to come up through to then have their next tier below that. Uh, again, strange how that one works, but there's just less teams from our end of the spectrum that are in there. So when that when you have that promotion relegation yearly, there's too many teams in the league that are just from that other area anyway. It works out somehow. FA Cup though, we are in. So this is our first year entering the FA Cup. This is gonna be our most interesting run for the next few seasons, easily by far. Because here, there are giants, there are teams. We know that we are way too good for the division we just came out of. We know that we are way too good for the division we are entering. How good? You don't know until you really break down the season, right? We had a near perfect season the year before. Last season, we lost. It wasn't a undefeated season. But we lost one, we drew one, where we just drew one the year before. So what's the damage going to be this year? We lose twice, right? How much harder is it? How much worse off are we? Regardless, we're still probably, you would think, going to crush the league until we get that bit higher up, right? We've got a few years of cruise control still happening. But the FA Cup features those higher divisions, and we will exceed what happens locally division-wise, and we should be able to rise through the ranks a bit. But how far some of that depends on the draw, right? If you draw a Manchester club in the third round, the first round that they enter, you're probably going to get knocked off. If you draw somebody from your fellow division in the third round, you've got a good chance of continuing on. The draw has a huge impact. Now, of course, third round is probably not somewhere we're going to be playing at yet. But where? Where do we fall in compared to other teams? It's a great test. Love to see it. Can we hang with a National League side? Are we good enough for that? Or are we still, you know, uh, good enough to be an eighth tier side? That's why the FA Cup is going to be the most intriguing competition for the next few years. But, oh, wait, there's more. We do finally get to the FA Cup, but we do have two other trophies now. The FA Vase is one that I'm familiar with. Exactly which divisions kind of fall into that. It's your non-league competition. How many there are? Yeah, because it's the... It's like the third tier one. You get the League Cup. FA Trophy? FA Vase? Something like that? That's a ways down there. But maybe it tops out at something like 8th? tier in which case oh hello we've got a great shot at winning that trophy and then the Les Phillips Cup now based on the one we just played this is probably that Western League only you got the Premier Division maybe those couple divisions below it could be a combination of what's in that greater Western League. I wouldn't be surprised if that's uh, who we're up against for this one. In which case, we've got to be favorites for that. I'm really quite grateful that I've managed to, in a standard manner, without cheesing it, get all but one player signed up for next year. Contract-wise, 
with our minimum security, we do have to choose just a single contract. That is Sam Brooks. Sam Brooks has no interest in re-signing with the club, uh, but it's easy to go in and just add one more year to that contract. I've actually also managed to get us into a position now where Craig McDonald has that expiring contract. Of course, that's the loan, so he's going to be gone in just a few more days. We will have to replace him in that attacking mid position, but we do have some options. But beyond that, I've got three youth level contracts, and that's it. And two of these guys are still too young. They were from last year's intake, uh, Quinta Ferra and Ryan Gordon, and then the one we just had uh, with Trader. So just those three players from the last couple of years featuring in that senior squad, which is you know very different from where we were early on, but we've got two years worth of intakes for all the rest. And those guys, of course, have developed. What I'm gonna have to figure out though, because I really hate Mickey Norris, he is pretty much as good as he's going to get. I need to figure out a replacement and uh, just bump him down to the U21s because I'm sick of his terrible, terrible training ratings, his incessant whining, and the only thing is he actually does perform. <laughs> Even though he's only a 45 current ability, he gets assists. So he is creative, but he's annoying. And I'm just ready to be, okay, let's move on to somebody who can progress because everybody else on the senior squad has that 100 plus potential ability. And while, you know, not everybody is getting better, Greg is kind of locked in where he's at. He has improved slightly, but his problem is he doesn't play. He's backup goalkeeper. He was that starting goalkeeper that first intake year that we had uh, until Penerys came along and, and took his spot. But Penerys, who hasn't developed much, has developed a little. Goalkeeping has been hard for us, but we just hired a goalkeeping coach. So we'll see if we can get more progression out of our goalkeepers now, now that there's someone capable of training them, you know, besides this overworked, terrible rated manager that this club has. But obviously those U23s don't have anyone. They're, they're all locked in at that older generation of current one abilities that we are ready to kind of start partying ways with. Uh, let those guys go and let the youth be the team. In the U21s, there are hard some options, except that we're talking about the guys that don't have the, the 100 potential ability, have the very low current ability. There's a couple that match uh, Norris, but that's it and they don't have the potential so they're not going to get better so they're really the guys in limbo who are at least a step above what we have here but a step below what this club needs so our answers have to be down in the u18s and here sibling of penry's or at least maybe a half sibling of penry's or step sibling what, what anyway we're, we're definitely talking about somebody who has some current ability, has some potential ability, mm -hmm. fills a void that Norris would be leaving behind. I think we already have our answer on that one. Uh, Mortland, Kitching, definitely our top prospects with that, plus a goalkeeper who's a top prospect, but better for him to get the experience down here and train and overtake Grig properly and then bring him along as the backup later on or maybe even the starter if he gets that good. Three candidates ready to step in and replace what will ultimately be not one, but two voids. I mean, Norris doesn't have a slot, right? He's that extra one, but with injuries, it's nice to have that one more player who doesn't make the bench. Do I even know that we're still five subs on the bench or are we up to a league that's gonna start having seven? When that starts, I don't know, but most of those higher divisions do offer seven spots on the bench. The hardest thing we can do for ourselves in the coming season is taking all three of these players, moving them to the senior squad, but keeping them available for U18's play. So they continue to grow 
and get that experience at the age of 16, but when needed, easily called upon to step up and come off the bench, uh, get a rare start here and there, that sort of thing. Probably would be the smart move to make. Or with two guys in the same position, probably just bring up two of these anyway. And so begins the life of a small club with big time prospects who have big time ambition. The first player, the same player that we just cheesed the new contract. I think he was content with leaving and suddenly now that he's got one year left on his deal, it's like, oh, come on, get me out of here. He already had that mentality. And so now he's asking, wait, Oxford United just asked, uh, just offered $200 why didn't you take it? It's so much money. Well, no, actually, he doesn't care about how much the finances are. He cares about, wait, Oxford United, much bigger reputation, much bigger club, much higher division, is coming in and saying, they want me. I want them too. His value is not high, even with that extra year, but uh, he's not happy about the block transfer, so I will need to address it. And obviously, I can just put it in as finances, because that's the truth. If they offer enough, I'll accept. Like I said, we'll go with the finances route. They weren't offering enough money for you. I'm willing to think again if someone does come in with an appropriate bid. So if we can bump that up a little bit to like 7K, this would actually increase his value. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll try 6K. He's happy with 6K. Over the previous two seasons, we lost one player in each season and then had them loaned back to us. And each of those were, you know, like January transfers, as it were. Uh, this, I think, is the year that's going to be different. Our reputation has risen to such a level that we are noticeable. Our performance, our double last year, We've drawn some attention, and I'm getting... It, it's the 9th of July. I, the, you know, the transfer window just opened. We've got months left in the transfer window, and the drama is going to be intense. I have a feeling we could be losing not one, not two, but probably minimum three or four players this year. And we don't have a lot of replacement level uh, players to just step in and take their place so this is the first time that we really could be having to retool and that whole like woohoo easy climb might actually reach its first stumbling block uh, as we're gonna have to rely on some youth players some 16 17 year old players that aren't gonna be good enough either now or possibly ever to to really significantly contribute to the team now, i don't think it's gonna slow us down to the point where oh no we're gonna lose the league this year but if we are losing three to four players uh, we'll have to temper our expectations the fa cup those other couple of cups could be impacted and we could certainly take more losses this season not enough to knock us off the top but enough to make things interesting we're down one player already I hadn't even had. Uh, no, okay, let me rephrase that. I had maybe two offers for, for Atkins over the last week, and then bam, real Bedford comes in with a 26K offer, and he's got a 22K value. I mean, they've barely exceeded it. Just barely. I can and will try to manipulate it a little bit, but just barely because we can't run the risk of losing the deal. We've got minimum security. This has exceeded it. I have to let him go. So I'm going to try to push for an extra little bit. And we are absolutely going to go for that 50%. And then there you go. One day later, there goes player number two. It's only the 10th of July. And Sam Brooks, who we set that minimum bar at 6,000. Here comes West Brom at 6.25K. So that's enough to 
pry him away. This also is our defensive mid pairing, both leaving. Let's count ourselves lucky that two of those three U18 players that we're going, hey, let's call these guys up. We're defensive mids. They're both going to come straight into the starting lineup from the looks of things. I'll have to uh, look at who our replacement, who our backup defensive mid was in the first place, but they might both come into the starting lineup, especially with the potential they had. But that depth, bye-bye depth. I mean, it's it's gone. We're, we're probably going to have to call somebody else up. What we do need to do here, obviously, is uh, well, twofold. Let's go for the percentage of profit. The profit is easier to get them to agree to. And when they are spending so little on these purchases, it's easier to get this one. So pushing that in at 50%. Let's also see if we can get a loan back. We'll, we'll try. <laughs> they increased the value. Loan back not happening, but let's let's go ahead and go back with that percentage of profit. We'll, we'll try 45%. Right, we're negotiating down. There you go, okay, they have agreed to it. So 45% of profit from next sale and they actually increased by 2000 what West Brom is spending, which is, you know, literal pennies for them. And no loan back, unless they decide to offer it to us later. That's two players already out the door. <laughs> and then, and then, and then, we, we're going to get the loan back offer with Sam Brooks anyway, which, which is good because those those guys, those two replacement players, it's good to give one more year to kind of get them ready, to keep them in the U18s. I'm, I'm happy with that, and I'm happy with where it would put us a year from now. Funny thing is I asked this, and they, they said, no, we're going to offer you $2,000 instead. Atkins has rejected the contract from Real Bedford, Giving us another shot, still a very good chance that somebody else is going to swoop in and offer us something over that 22k value that he has, or 26k value that he may now have. It's incredibly likely, but for the moment, we're hanging on to both players at least till the end of this season. Neither deal has finalized. Uh, when it came to Brooks... Two more offers came in, exceeding the 6K value, but because of the 8K offer that had been accepted, it pushed his transfer value that much further up. So with a current transfer value of 8K, Redding's value of 6.25, I was able to turn down. But Millwall was offering 10K. So I went in to negotiate, and because I already had accepted a deal, I stipulated that two things must happen. One, you must give a loan back because we already have that on the on the plate. And two, you must give me that 50% future transfer profit. They decided against doing that and withdrew the offer. Now, minimum security wise, right? We, we can only push so far and negotiate so hard with that. But because we literally already have that deal in place, with an existing club, I felt that, hey, that's something we can negotiate and push for. They pushed back and said, no, that, that's on them. That's actually really stupid on their part because you're, you're getting a player for damn near nothing. But I get the not wanting to give away the transfer profit one. But when you're literally signing a player for fucking nothing, I mean, come on, 8,000 is nothing. To a championship club. 8,000 is something to somebody down here. If they were amateur. Not paying their players anything. And they just have some operating costs to get through for the year. And you sell 50 tickets a match. Uh, they cover your operating costs for the most part. But bam, $8,000. That's going to have an impact on, on the coffers. We are not that kind of club. We're, we're a club that has 800,000 in the bank gets a thousand people showing up per game we are above our tier and our reputation has already grown to match or be above our tier so those offers for pennies are just garbage but we've got rules and those rules are rules and we have to accept you know the fate of what's being offered there but 
okay. The Millwall thing makes sense under the circumstances because we already have a deal. It's already been accepted. Uh, it's already in place, and we can take that on. Anyway, in the meantime, do we have one player out the door? Will the other player be out the door? Will other players be out the door? This definitely is very quickly turning into the mass exodus year, uh, potentially. It's still only the 12th of July. We've got more than a month and a half left in the larger club's transfer window. Southend United have another deal in place. This one coming in quite a bit higher at 17 and a quarter percentage of profit from next sale now locked in at 40 percent on that one this one i'm not too pleased about because nobody's going to pay them a ton of money either uh, to get him off of their hands uh, so let's hope he opts for the bigger side uh, and no loan back included on this one they want him right away so i'm a little worried about that but technically more money was offered so i kind of have to accept Next team stepping up with an offer for Sam Brooks, AFC Wimbledon, 18.5K. His value has now been pushed to 18K. Loan back length and percentage of profit of 50% accepted this time around. Uh, at this point, I'd much rather see him go there than the other clubs, especially as a fan-owned club. Reading the latest to get in on the action at this point, there's too many teams, too many offers out there. Brooks will certainly take one of them brooks is gone but the good news is he's going to reading championship side so he will have a high value he will turn around for good profit and i got the 50 percent uh, profit percentage on the next sale also the loan back till the end of this season so that's that's good for us we get to have one more year of him and we'll get big money somewhere potentially down the road i have yet to cash in on any deals as of yet but sam brooks our third player to leave the club through a low ball offer but rules are rules and eventually we'll get those profit pieces no surprise obviously but we have nine players on the media dream 11 for the league bick and schmizek the top two rated players in the league and we are 1 to 91 odds for promotion, for winning the league. Yeah. So far, though, we've obviously really lucked out with all those offers that have been coming in and value offers in terms of relationship to how close it is to exceeding our valuation of players. There's still over a month to go in that transfer window, and in all likelihood, we will lose some more players. So things could change, because right now we've lost one player, and he's been loaned back to us for the year. So we haven't actually lost anything other than Craig McDonald, who had that situation a year ago, and we've been able to immediately replace him. And we are getting some development. The training facilities are good enough. The potential of the players is such that... We are seeing development. We are seeing players, you know, get better and better. And therefore, we're in a better state than we were a year ago at this point. But is that mass exodus still going to be a thing? I've got a week until the first match, but here is the expectations for the year. That Les Phillips club, the, the cup that, that league only won, we are expected to win. The FA Vase. We're expected to win that as well. That one looks to be a little trickier. We'll see if we can pull that off. FA Cup, reach the first round proper, get through the qualifying rounds. And then Western League Premier Division, heavy favorites. So is it going to be a three-trophy year? Can we pull off all three of those expected wins? I certainly was not expecting the level of drama that we had this offseason season and somehow still only one player has vacated and technically hasn't vacated as we get them back on loan for the year. But there's still a month to go. But not for games. League underway. Heavy favorites for the league. 
for now, our team is still intact, but of course we do have one replacement player. McDonald did leave from his loan at the end of the season, heading back to his parent club with a total of three players now off to the championship. Brooks into trainer. Trainer, the new starter, and that is so close to a goal. And we have to see a huge stop from Addison there. Did we see stops like that in the last year? I don't think we really did. Uh, Zarp hitting on the counterattack here. Again, something we weren't seeing down in the tier below. We are dominating. But I'm already starting to see and experience things that we weren't seeing. Uh, Jones with a fantastic strike there. And Addison flies to make that stop. And not only does he stop it, but he hangs on to it. Now you're seeing our level of dominance, right? Our control of possession, our ability to find space. We are all over these guys, and certainly we're going to come away with a winner at some point, right? Uh, one would think. But they are stepping up making big plays. The defender gets that block in, keeps that one out. Addison reaches up, doesn't make a meal of it. He, he takes ownership and grabs that ball. Spizek has to make a, a good play here, otherwise they're through. So we are seeing opposition that is capable of more than what we were experiencing before. How many times would we have seen Bick get through? Oh, wow. Are you kidding me? This is what it's going to take for us to score? A gift of a penalty on what looks like a de good defensive play. That's an absolute gift. I do not want to accept it. Realistically, I want us to beat these guys on merit. Now, yes, it's been coming. Seven attempts, six on target. We are playing fantastic. We have XG that easily puts us in range. That goal, that free kick from Schmizek, that was deserved. I didn't see the foul on that one. But the ref really, really helped us out to open the floodgates to end their strong defense. Now, of course, that was all still inside 20 minutes. It was only a matter of time. Another free kick, another dangerous position one, and Gordon just above that upper corner, just out of range of making it three and realistically what should have been our second. Surprise, no new offers have come in for Atkins over the last couple of weeks after that quick uh, leave that he had. That was a nice goal. Nothing the keeper can do to stop that one. And we very much have our deserved result on its way. And the start to a new campaign, of course, starting on the right foot. This might be the only league game you see all season long. I'll keep you up to date on what's going on. But we are going to be focusing our attention going forward. Yes, onside. We're going to focus our attention going forward on those cup competitions three of them and we are not going to simply pick them up from the beginning there's three of them for one thing instead of just one like last season uh, but we know the lower rounds as we make a mistake here Quintafera forced into oof, makes his own little mistake on that one there, this is different Woods makes a good cut out Mueller looked like he was offside yes flag is raised. Penn Rice had to stop anyway. But it's something. It's something that we didn't see from a lot of others. We make a really good play there. But they recover. So we are seeing better play than what we've seen so far. I think as a result, somewhere, somehow, some team will surprise us. The loss we took last year not going to be a fluke this year. Somebody's going to beat us on merit. We're going to go on the road to some team and struggle. But for now, this one's 4-0. Started with a gift. We got a little lucky on that one. I think we went between the legs of two players there. Shouldn't have come away with that one. Oh, wow. You're seeing how we're scoring goals, though, right? That, that little across-the-box action... Low crosses, passes for easy chip-ins. Trader sets up Gordon here. Gordon's just tapping. 
tap in stuff. Nothing the keeper can do. We are attacking the box well, attacking the box better than the defense can react. And man, oh man, is that leading to a lot of chances. It's 5 0. We're going to go ahead and wrap this one up here. You know it's going to be a win. And farewell to the league, but I'll keep you informed on it. Farewell to the episode. I'm the Cathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.